Hi, I'm Tim Van Damen. I'm the director and one of the producers of Romeo and Juliet, A Love Song. And this is my interview with fleetstreet.co.nz. Making Romeo and Juliet, how did that come apart? Um, well, I made all these music videos and then I won a few awards and some guys contacted me with a CD uh, and it had, they'd written Romeo and Juliet into songs, like so various scenes into songs. Mm -hmm. And they said, do you think that you could turn it into a film? And I said, uh, I'm not sure, but like, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll have a crack. Um, and I thought, you know, because you get approached all the time with projects or, or like, oh, you know, this and that and the other. And most of them uh, never happen, you know, it's just people talking. And I didn't know if that was one of these as well. Mm -hmm. And then, but then I, I come up with uh, a way to treat it, which I thought was interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, it's been done so many times before that you want to offer something um, different and something a bit fresh. Mm -hmm. So, um I thought, I thought about all the things that it could be and normally is, then all the things that are opposite to that. And I said, well, you know, you can't do either of those. Mm. So you've got to find something else. So thought about this idea of, you know, like a Romanian campground where they're singing, but they're not really singing, they're just sort of talking. Mm. But it sounds like they're singing. Um, and because the voice is already done, I could cast whatever sort of faces that I would like were able to um, take this uh, soundtrack and turn it into a film the same way as we had done so many music videos. Obviously, I mean, there's been so many portrayals of Romeo and Juliet. Was there one in particular that gave you inspiration? I knew that it would be compared to the Baz Luhrmann one just because that's the last one anyone remembers. Mm -hmm. um, but I was really, um, tr I did everything I could to try and make it not like that one. I watched the other versions of Romeo and Juliet to make sure that I wasn't going to be doing anything too similar. I mean, I still think the best version is, is the Zeffirelli version from the 60s. Just the intensity of the performances yeah. um, uh, is really clever. How did your music video experience help you with Romeo and Juliet? Doing all those music videos o over that time and really um, being used to doing huge amount of work and really long hours and almost living with the crew. We're just doing the same thing but in a, in a longer format but trying as hard as we can to make it not seem like a series of music videos. Mm. So being out there on location, what was that like? Filmmaking camp with friends. <laughs> <laughs> so elaborate on that. Were there difficulties in the shoot, and and how did you how did you overcome those? Uh, not really. I mean, well, the lead actress broke her toe, but other than that, I mean, it's uneventful really. We just had a good time and made a film. Yeah, the film commission were like an amazing help to you guys. Yeah. During during this whole process, how did they start coming and support you? Well, the film film commission. Um, it was sort of an anomaly, I guess. They haven't really funded anything like this before, and especially from a bunch of first-time filmmakers. Um, but I think something about the project sort of intrigued them. I made a half-hour edit about a month into it mm -hmm. and sent that to them along with um, a bit of info about what we were doing and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Then uh, they came on, on site when we were still filming. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to see what we were up to yeah. and you know sort of were confused about where, where is, where's all the crew and <laughs> you know because there's only about five of us yeah and then um, and but but you know saw that we we work our ass off sort of thing you know and um, then we found out that they were going to help us out in terms of uh, giving us some money help finish it. You got it into New Zealand International Film Festival and it premiered there. That must have been a great feeling. It was awesome to have it play at the Civic and, and just have such a massive crowd and, mm. um, and, a, and a massive relief too, you know, because you've watched it so many hundreds of times, but only ever with people that have worked on it. And all you do is sit there and rip it to bits. Uh, and then, you, I'm, you know, by that stage, I'm not sure if any of my jokes work. I don't know if any of uh, if the story is um, emotionally engaging enough, uh, and then to watch it and to see it actually start to work, 
yeah. and after about 10 minutes into it you think oh my god it's working and then and and then it, and then it just pulls people along and it and it seems to work so um it's the only sort of thing that i had that was sort of like a a guiding beacon along the way to know if what i was doing was working or not mm -hmm. was just to remember back to what it was like when i first came up with these with these ideas mm -hmm. for how it should feel at certain times mm -hmm. and what i thought would make it feel like that mm -hmm. but after a while that washes over and it's just like white noise and you can't tell if it's doing it you've just got to try and remember what you thought to start with yeah until yeah. the audience watches it and then you get that payoff yeah because yeah yeah and then when they watch it you, you're just watching them watch it and see how they're reacting yeah so now you're about to go go overseas and kind of follow uh, Romeo and Juliet on a festival circuit. So where are some of the places you're going to go to and how long is it going to be? It started in Russia a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And it plays at CBGB in Times Square. Oh, wow. Um, which will be cool. It'll be amazing. Uh, and then it goes to uh, a festival in Saint-Tropez mm -hmm. um, in the south of France there. Where else? Various spots so i'm just gonna sort of dot, dot around dot around after romeo and juliet do you have your eyes set on another big project you know you've got the people who say oh you gotta do another musical mm. um, because you're growing a certain audience then you've got people that say uh don't do another musical because then you're building a musical audience and when you do something else they'll all be disappointed yeah um and then you've got people who uh, interested in you doing more sort of like f festival stuff, you know, like mm. social drama -y sort of stuff. Mm. Um, and then I've got what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you very much, Tim Van Damman, for oh. talking to us. Thank you.